The Rubber Beauties podcast is back. A lot of people, um, somewhat shockingly, got very upset when we missed about three Rubber Beauties. When Stoff's uh, laptop broke down, and then Jimmy got tied up in the World Juniors, and Puffy was in rehab, and Lester was uh, busy with work, um, we we missed I think three episodes of Rubber Beauties, which uh, is the if you're if you're turning into rubber boots, uh, people get confused. This is the accompaniment. What's the word I'm looking for? Pops off. This is the complimentary. <laughs> I was trying to say accompaniment. This is the companion podcast to the Beauties podcast, based on the book Beauties. Um, guys, I don't want to say anything, but one of the best-selling books of 2020. Just, I'm sorry. Ooh. Very well big. Done. Let's well just done. say the folks at Harper Collins are anxious for Beauties too. And oh, three. are they and, are they ooh. anxious where they're going to up their quotes? <laughs> I don't know. That's not a lot of money in books. <laughs> now, now for future books, <laughs> I like to run, talk a big game. But <laughs> once you run out of NHLers and such, will the next books be on like beer leaguers and? Oh yeah, like I will have Puffy's kid, uh, kids Austin, <laughs> trying to tell me a funny story from like the Pee Wee dressing room. Wow, <laughs> Austin, you got to have something more. <laughs> I don't have well, a whole then, chapter here. Timmy threw a piece of tape at me. That's good enough. <laughs> Beauty's 12. Tape gate. <laughs> so uh, this chapter of Beauty's, uh, the podcast and the book was uh, about Wayne Gretzky. So obviously uh, it, was a, it, was, it was a thrill for me when I, when I got a hold of Wayne that he had a story because one of my big issues was, I, I, you know, what story hasn't Wayne Gretzky told in another one of his millions of books written about him? And I said, could you find a story that you haven't told yet? He said, give me a day. And he called me back the next day and, and had this story. Um, he was packing for a trip, by the way. If the, the audio is not perfect in the podcast. It's because he was packing while he was walking around his room packing. It's kind of like you know, Lester's microphone when he's in his love den. It was off and on. But, um, sorry, Lester. It's fine. Uh, you know what? Why am I talking for? What were your impressions, Lester, of the, uh, the Wayne Gretzky chapter? Oh, uh, listen, first of all, I got to tell you, I love Wayne Gretzky. I, he is one of my favorite athletes of all time. Um, and I have to tell you, my bitter disappointment in my life to, the, to this date is that as long as I've been with TSN, I've never met him. I was very close to meeting. I, I actually was about two feet from him, and, and, and the, uh, at the time it was the Sky Dome. He was in a suite. We, I was in the TSN box, and the next suite over, a couple suites over, was the Rogers uh, suite, and he was in there, I guess, doing an interview or something like that. Uh, or maybe it was our broadcast booth at the time, but he was in there, and I went down, and I was two people away from him, and then he had to go. So I never got a chance to say hello or get his autograph or anything like that. So, Jimmy... If you could, no, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> well, but, if I'd but, known that, there was a time he came in. Um, yeah, came not in too long ago. With, I think he did an interview with, actually, with, I was going to say with me, but I think it was with O-Dog. Mm -hmm. And uh, he was it in was Studio 6 about two years ago. And the cool thing, Lester, was, uh, I may have told this story before, way back on the pod, but he, right by my dressing room, as you're walking through the CTV building towards our Studio 6, there are these... Uh, great photos, legendary photos of great moments in sports, but they're done look. on uh, a fabric. Yes, on yeah. silk. Are they silk screen or something? Would that be the proper? Yeah, term? there's something like I, that. I, yeah, something like that. I would say that's that's probably fabric. they're beautiful. They're beautiful photos, and there's one of Wayne Gretzky, and uh, he walked by, uh, you know, just with the group that was with him, and we were just walking him to Studio Six, and he saw the photo and he stopped and he pulled the sharpie out and signed it. Yeah, it's so really cool. if, if you look at that photo, uh, Wayne signed that just walking by a couple of years ago. But if I'd have known, I would have called him down to Studio Six because Wayne, you know, is the uh, is the greatest when it comes to. And I, it, it feels the most Canadian thing is that I won't say the majority of Canadians because that wouldn't be numerically correct. But 
people in hockey, almost everybody seems to have a Wayne Gretzky story that they met him somewhere along the way, or their dad yeah. met him or their kid met yeah. him or their wife or their mother, the sister, whatever had met him. My first Wayne Gretzky story was in Hull. Uh, when I used to go to Hull, when I lived in Ottawa, so I was probably 18 or something. And I believe that the, uh, he was in Hull anyway at the bar. I don't know if it was when he was with the Kings and they trained in Hull or if it was, must have been before that. But um, he was in Hull and he cozied right up to me at the bar and I offered to buy him a drink. And I said, this is the dumbest thing ever. This guy's worth like $20 million. I make like 14 <laughs> bucks an hour. And I'm trying, but that's what everybody does. They want to buy a rescue beer. And he said, he said, no, that was the first time I ever met him. But uh, yeah, I just thought it was a great little story, right? It just, uh, it's a silly little story about a little joke he tells in the corner with uh, against the Flyers, but it's such a good little story. Well, that's the, th- that's the thing about it, because I mean, again, you, we all think about Wayne Gretzky and, and this larger than life, this, 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 this crazy uh, legacy that he has. And I remember seeing uh, a clip. I think it was there was a film a long time ago called Boys on the Bus. And uh, there was a clip in it, and he's talking. He says, you know, I'm just one of the boys, you know. And, and uh, you, you get the sense that he really means that. So to hear this story now years later, I mean, that's a great line. That's so funny. <laughs> like, can I yeah. say the line? Yeah, of course. I mean, okay, hopefully so people, have listened, people have listened to the podcast by yeah. now. But or, um, or do you want to do a puff? It's up to you. No, no, go ahead. Go say the okay, line. Well, talk, it is, so- talk it is giving it to him in the corner. Saying I'm going to do this to you every shift, all seven games, and Gretzky says, "I don't know about you, but I'm only playing four more games," yeah, and that's boom. just like everybody shuts up for a while, and eventually guys start laughing, which I think is hilarious. Yeah. You know, but this larger than life guy, and, he, and and I just I never thought at any point in his career he was like that, that he would have said it. And maybe that was only the one and only time he ever said something like that, but. And then, of course, he goes on to back it up. The Oilers are down uh, one game already. That's game two. They win game two. They win game three. They win game four. They win five. It's over at five. Gretzky's the Conn Smythe, if I'm not mistaken. That's his, his and, best Stanley Cup final ever. Okay. 1985. And uh, yeah. unbelievable. Unbelievable. Yeah. And as he said in the thing, uh, he, everybody thought that somebody had farted. That's why he <laughs> thought everybody was laughing in the corner. <laughs> but... Uh, <laughs> And Talkett's great. Uh, you know, Talkett and Gretzky have a long history together now and are in good buddies. But that was basically the beginning of their relationship when Talkett's job was to hack and whack Gretzky every single shift. And, and Talkett, I, I love how he says it in the, uh, in the podcast. He just, you know, he's, he's trash talking him and giving it to him. And then Gretzky tells that little, says that little line and Talkett doesn't know what to say. He's like, <laughs> 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 and his teammates are all laughing, right? So he's ruined. The entire mood is ruined for Talkett. You can't you can't come back and trash talk, but uh. yeah. The other thing I liked, uh, and uh, I think this is a, it's important to the to, you know puts the context of his fame and and it, well, puts into context his fame is when he goes to get a haircut, uh, and then you know he's he has an ask Rick to go take a go go with him to the haircut, but uh, eventually Rick decides to go with him to to get his haircut, and within about you know twenty minutes of him being there, there's like fifteen hundred people waiting to get an autograph or see him or something like that. And it's just, uh, you know, none of us can imagine, no offense stuff, can imagine what it would be like to go get a haircut. (laughs) (laughs) Just cold. I was going to say, that's the the reason I don't grow my hair out. The fame. Stoff or Puffy, have you met Wayne ever? I've met him a couple times. Uh, I met him down in the Studio 6 that that one day I was down there. And then I met him at the Cup Final when it was in L.A., um, either in 12 or 14. I can't remember what one, but we were doing our hits at uh, the L.A. Live, I guess it's called, like the right across from the Staples Center. And right. we, like as we usually will, if there's an event that Way Crack sees at, We'll try to get him on our our set to talk. Oh, but he came into the he came into the bar there that we were. Yeah, we were he came in over right? the bar. Yeah, and nice. I just that was a great. By the way, that was a great Stanley Cup final. Oh, hell, we were, on. <laughs> Puffy and I. First of all, our hotel was uh, near. What was it near sort of Venice Manhattan, Beach, Manhattan Beach, Manhattan sort of in Beach, the middle? Think, yeah. Yeah, we went to that that restaurant. Manhattan Beach is one of my favorites. What's it called? It's right on the water. But I love the bar. The I love that restaurant, but I also love the little like speech bar right on the other side of the street. Right. Yeah. So just a grind, grungy kind of yeah, beach bar, which is amazing. Bar. Sorry, guys. We're yeah. me no, it's okay. Was members. that now that that now that that I I assume you're talking about the New York LA final. Correct. It would have been 14. Yeah. With well, the New York or the Jersey, both of them. Or the Jersey one. Yeah, I'm I, not, guess, I can't I remember which one it was. Yeah. 
I mean, yeah. you would have had access to to technically two great cities on the East Coast, and certainly LA. And well, we had a bunch of good is. cities for a while. Yeah, the Cup yeah, finals. we had a great run. Stoff, have you ever met the great one? Uh, no, I've never met him though. Well, we'll have to hook that up. We'll get him on the pod. <laughs> <laughs> hey, the thing, sure, I, the yeah. thing I like uh, listening with talking about that story with the uh, the haircut. It kind of like him and like uh, him and Tiger Woods kind of have sort of similar uh, lives in the sense that they were, you know, phenoms at a young age and, uh, you know, grew up in the spotlight and then got to the to be the best in the world. But they're so they're so different with sort of how they handled it, like where not like uh, like where Tiger, you know, very, you know, the public both the, both are wildly loved by the public, but where Tiger has always been more distant. And uh, where Wayne sort of more in, embraced, you know, people. But I think they're both probably similar, and I don't think either of them was super comfortable with that level of fame. It was just sort of so, interesting. Very true. There. A couple of things. I mean, first of all, I think that even Wayne would say the Tiger phenomenon, just because it was worldwide, uh, was something, and the, you know, the era was a little bit later. Uh, was something even Wayne, like just the masses of people around him on a golf course. The part about being in Canada and being Canadian, like I can even remember at that bar that night, most people leave Wayne alone, right? It's just like the Canadian thing to do. A few people will come up. It's just like when you and I are out now, Puffy, most people yeah. leave us alone. Most people I mean, uh, but uh, it, I don't think any of us will ever understand what it's like to be one of those guys and what they go through. And so I never, when people say, Oh yeah, Tiger Woods snubby didn't sign my autograph. I'm like, you, you don't understand that that was, you know, that was maybe a huge minute for you, but everywhere the guy goes, that's all, that's everyone. And it, it, you don't want to hit me when I first was covering hockey early in my career in Ottawa, the Kings came into town and uh, Wayne did not do interviews on the morning of the game day. And I was sent down as the little sports reporter or news reporter to do a story on Wayne Gretzky. And so I was so frustrated because I didn't get him because he, that I found the PR guy and the PR guy's like, yeah, Wayne's not talking today. And which I probably should have known. Maybe he never spoke on game days, but I was very inexperienced. Right. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, that's bull, man. That's bull <laughs> that he's not made available. You go and the guy looked at me like this little clown in a clip-on tie. And he's like, and he pulled me aside and he said, do you have any idea the demands on this guy every day, what, what he goes through and such? And I'm like, no. <laughs> 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 and I left that and go, yeah, he's probably right. And uh, I'm kind of an idiot. Well, but, that's, that's uh, kind of cool. That's kind of nice that he kind of pulled you aside and just tried to help you out. I mean, you know who it is? Side. He had him uh, against the wall. Oh, yeah. <laughs> His name is escaping me now. He's the VP now. Uh, you know, His name? VP. Gary Bettman. <laughs> <laughs> no, but we like, changed the first name. You know what I was going to say as well, and, and, and you know what? It's, it's a, a very good point about how different they were handling that, that level of fame. But I think it speaks as well to the game of hockey um, in, in, in terms of the family aspect here, a team sport versus an individual sport as well. And look, and, and look, I think, uh, you know, Gretzky, for the most part, I mean, you always had those people around him to help him out. And whether it be a Sather, whether it be a Messier, quite frankly, whether it be, uh, I mean, obviously his father, tremendous in, in, uh, influence. Uh, not that, uh, that, that uh, Tiger's father wasn't as well, but I think it's a different sport, different uh, and a different culture between Canada and the U.S. as well. I think that's why. But, but I think it's just in the restaurants you choose. <laughs> it's not just the sport, though. Like, it is the guy. And I say yeah. the same thing with Sid. Like, Sid is very Wayne-like. They just get it. And we had Wayne on for the World Juniors. I did the interview a couple of days before, before Christmas, uh, to talk about his, you know, the whatever anniversary of his game against the Czech Republic where he had six points as a 16-year-old. Mm -hmm. And that interview, he was so good because he talked about every moment, you know, with the passion, like it was the first time he told the story. And we've seen so many athletes now, just you know, their eyes roll, right? I'm not going to answer that question again, or I've already told that story. Mm -hmm. And he found a way to make it seem like you were out for beer and it was the first time anyone asked him about that game. And yeah. that's an ability that Gretzky has that I think is, is unbelievable, that I, I rare among the greatest athletes of all time, I think. Hey, you got to earn your nickname, uh, right? You got to earn your nickname, as Darren exactly. Pang said. Yeah. <laughs> 
Uh, okay, so that is uh, Beauties. Uh, so we hope to keep Beauties going also on a regular basis, uh, and Rubber Beauties will go with it. Uh, because I know that some people uh, probably are listening to Rubber Boots. So there's an uncanny amount of people that come and listen to this podcast before they've listened to Beauties. So Rubber Beauties is brought to you by our friends at BetSafe.net. This is our bonus for BetSafe.net. They really yes. only sponsor Rubber Boots, but we are throwing in the sponsorship of Rubber Beauties, right? Go play some free games, all free, on betsafe.net. Thanks for listening. We'll be back with another episode of Beauties and Rubber Beauties next week. Rubber Beauties, Rubber Beauties, the truth, the truth to themselves. Rubber Beauties, Rubber Beauties, the truth, it's true, it's true. It's true. Are you wearing your rubber boots tonight?